All right, everybody. Yeah, I've made a big mess out of my bed. What a bunch of fun that is. What I've got here, this is a bit of an interesting project. I was hitting the local brick a brack stores, getting into trouble again, and I came across some Radio Shack Realistic Nova 6 loudspeakers. Now, the proprietor of the shop told me that he'd played them, and these are rated for about 40 watts input power, and he said he'd played them with a 200 watt receiver and turned it up so high that he couldn't even stand to be around them. Well, I figured for 10 bucks I'd take a chance on them. Turns out for the most part it was a worthwhile chance to take because the woofer surround on these, these are mid to late 70s speakers, the woofer surround on these seems to be pretty well impervious to rotting. It's not brittle, it's not fragile, it's not degraded, and it's really unlike any I've ever seen before in that it's concave. So that's definitely something that works toward the favor of these speakers. Well, I was listening to them and it seemed like there was something missing. I just couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. So I began to look at them and I began to realize that there was nothing coming out of the stock tweeter. Well, I don't know if the guy who was playing them blew the tweeters. I took one of the tweeters apart and I didn't find any signs of death by overheating or overcurrent. It just seemed that some of the turns of magnet wire had broken loose from the uh, coil form around the center of the speaker. But I thought these speakers might be worth saving. So I decided after recapping the crossover in them and doing things like that just to help keep them fresh, I decided to go for a replacement, uh, replacement tweeter. And what I've got here is the Dayton loudspeaker. It's a brand of Parts Express. And I have something else from Parts Express that I might be talking about in the near future suggested to me by YouTube user Weasel2HTM and um, this is number 275055 so if you have a set of realistic Nova 6's with blown tweeters these will work as a substitute and the only drawback is the problem here is that this rubber cup really doesn't let the speaker fit properly. You could shoehorn it in there and probably make it work and look pretty close to being right but to do that seems like a lot of work and the back of these speakers are pretty well sealed off anyway so I don't think it's going to change the acoustics of the speaker too much. And this is the second one that I've put a new tweeter in. I already did the other one down there and I've tested it and they sound nice. You know, They're not a super high power pair of speakers but if you could find a pair of these the fact that the woofer surround seems impervious to rot the stock tweeter has a canvas like surround that probably won't rot either if you can find some of these cheap, I'd pick them up. They sound great. Anyway, I've done everything else that needs to be done to these. If you take a pair of them apart, be aware that there's fiberglass in there, so protect yourself when you're handling that. Because you don't want fiberglass splinters and you certainly don't want to breathe it. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little modification here with the key keeper's drill and take this cup out there's the holes on this speaker, they're awful close, but they won't go into the pre-drilled holes. I'm going to take this cup out and just put it aside, you know, in case some future owner wants it. And then I'm going to install this new tweeter, and then I'm going to try it out. And I think if the other speaker is anything to go by, I'll be pleasantly surprised. It seems to work very, very well. It's a nice sound and set of speakers. Interestingly, these Dayton speakers are allegedly shielded, but not perfectly so. There's just the faintest bit of a magnetic field being emitted from them. Of course, that falls off rapidly with distance. So let me get started here. Alright, so I'm basically ready to hook up the new tweeter here. And then I'll drill some holes to mount it, and I'll go ahead and screw it in using the screws that came with the speaker, because they're more than suitable enough. Now if you do this on your own, you need to be mindful of polarity. You need to make sure that positive goes to positive, that's a negative lead. Positive goes to positive, negative goes to negative. Otherwise you're going to have weird phasing problems between your woofer and your tweeter. And in fact when I got these speakers there was such a weird problem because one of them completely sounded wrong and the other one sounded okay until I reversed the speaker leads on one of them. Well, it turns out with 30-year-old speakers, you can never take anything for granted. And one of the things that ended up uh, happening here 
when I was recapping the crossover, I discovered that somebody had bypassed the crossover in one of the speakers, although there was nothing wrong with it, and they had actually managed to hook the wires up to the woofer backwards while leaving them going to the tweeter correctly. So that was quite fun. Never, never underestimate what you might find in an old piece of equipment when you're going around to restore and recover it. But yeah, basically all I have to do, hook up these wires, pop that thing in there, and be set to go again. Alright, so there's all the holes drilled. You want to protect your other speaker, and you want to try to protect the tweeter. You know, if it has a reinforcing protective structure over it like this one does, you can just put some mild adhesive tape on there to protect it. Anyway, I'll start all these screws and drive them in the rest of the way and take this set of speakers for a little test drive and just see how they sound. Of course, it is important when you're replacing drivers in speakers to pick ones with similar frequency response characteristics to what you are replacing. Otherwise, you might throw the tonal balance of your speaker system off completely, and that won't do it any good. This Dayton tweeter comes pretty close to the original specifications, and the crossover can make the difference. I think the crossover point in these is about 4,000 hertz, and this tweeter has response somewhere around 5,000 to 20,000 quoted. So, pretty close, works pretty well, and I'm pretty happy with it. Now, an important thing to be sure of when you're doing something similar with your own speakers, you need to be mindful of how the speakers were constructed. These realistic Nova 6 speakers are what you call acoustic suspension loudspeakers, and I believe that technique of speaker design was invented at Acoustic Research sometime in the 1940s, I think. Well, I'm not terribly sure on that, so don't quote me. But basically, when you have an acoustic suspension speaker, there's a volume of air inside, the, inside this box that acts as a sort of spring that at least the woofer has to work against. Now, these had a little bit of relief because the tweeter had that cloth surround on it that would allow some air to come in and out around it, but not very much because they had that little plastic cup that had a bundle of just polyester fiber fill in the bottom of it as opposed to fiberglass. And... Um, you need to make sure that you don't violate the original design of the speaker or it's probably going to sound pretty bad. Now before I button these up, I'm going to hook this up to the stereo receiver, play a little music through it and see how it sounds. That's probably not a bad idea if your amplifier may not be robust in the case of a short circuit as some of my antique Technics amplifiers are. You might want to go ahead and test your work first to make sure that nothing's shorted inside the speaker, which is what I'm going to do right now. And what you're seeing there is the uh, crossover capacitor being charged, but these speakers seem to be healthy. Radio Shack quotes an 8 ohm resistance, and these things are hovering around 7, 7.1, 7.3, so they should be good to go. Alright, there's a little music playing. Yeah, there's some high end there. Of course, it's hard to tell. My camera microphone rolls off the high frequencies pretty badly. Here goes. Why can't our romance just keep on moving slower? Maybe I'm suspicious because you love me so hard to find. But all in all, these are some nice speakers, and they've now been restored. 100% functionality, which is very nice. And up on top here is another treasure I came across recently, kind of an oddball piece. It's a Technics Audio Timer, a model SH4020. Tells time in 24-hour mode and has a little heartbeat indicator down by the 8 there. Kind of a neat little piece. Has time setting, second synchronization, timer on, timer off, and sleep modes. But anyway, there you have it, a quick and dirty guide to replacing a driver, a damaged driver, in a speaker enclosure. Thank you for watching. If you have a comment, feel free to leave one below. Just to lend some support to the theory that these are kind of camouflaged battle speakers, the grills in these things are actually secured by little Phillips screws. An unexpectedly nice touch. Most speaker grills just are held in by some clips that pull in and out.